So the first thing we want to do in this experiment is to prepare our pondweed. The pondweed we found was a water milfoil, which is commonly found in many ponds or stagnant water areas in Belize. The water milfoil has wispy feathery like leaves that grow in a whirl around the stem. What I want to do is prepare 16 stems from this pondweed that would have relatively the same number of leaves. Once we've prepared those stems, we can then go ahead and set up the apparatus. In today's experiment, we'll investigate how light intensity and concentration affect the rate of photosynthesis. By this point, I assume you know what photosynthesis is. Basically, the pondweed is a green plant which will convert carbon dioxide and water to produce oxygen. By manipulating certain conditions, we can test how they affect the rate of photosynthesis. In order to keep the plants fresh, we try to do this preparation as quick as possible and have the plants stored in water. Now that the leaves are ready, we can begin to set up the apparatus. Firstly, we prepare the solution that will go inside the beaker. I'll use 500 ml of solution, so it'll take about 20 cm cubes of sodium bicarbonate diluted with water. Firstly, four conditions will be tested, so this apparatus will have to be set up three other times. Once I've added my water up to the 500 ml mark, I'm just going to stir and make sure that solution is mixed well. So our next step is to prepare the pond weeds into the funnel. I will take four equal stems and add them with the nip end into the nozzle of the funnel. Once the stems are secured in place, the inverted funnel can then be placed into the beaker. It is important to get the nip ends of the pondweed inside the nozzle of the funnel because it's these ends that will produce the more oxygen. Although oxygen is produced at the leaves and in the stem, majority of the bubbling that you will observe will be coming from the actual stems of the plant. Now the final step is to invert a tube filled with the solution over the nozzle of the funnel. Normally I would use a test tube, but in this case, to make measurements easier, I'm going to use a 10 ml measuring cylinder. Here's a look at the apparatus. Now what we expect to happen is that any oxygen produced will displace water inside the tube. So the change in volume inside the tube will be equivalent to the change in the amount of oxygen produced by the pond weed. The weights or coins that are placed underneath the funnel are just to give some space between the funnel edge and the beaker. I then prepared three more apparatus to represent the four variables that we were about to test. The main light source that we'll be using in this experiment is just a homemade setup with some fluorescent bulbs. Two plants 
in experiment one will be placed at a distance of 40 and 80 centimeters away from the light source. So I've placed out the first two beakers at 40 and 80 centimeters from the light source and I've labeled each according to the initial value inside the measuring cylinder. It is also important to turn off all other light sources inside the room so that the lamp is the only source affecting your results. The third variable was placed inside a locker in the lab which represented darkness. Again, the beaker was labeled according to the initial volume inside the measuring cylinder. The fourth and final variable was placed on a reel outside the lab to expose the apparatus to direct sunlight. Some limitations that might have affected this experiment are the weather in that it was a cloudy day which might have affected the rate of photosynthesis and also temperature being that that is another independent variable that can affect the rate of photosynthesis. After leaving the experiments for an hour in their varied conditions, we came back and observed the change in volume inside the test tubes. As you look closely around the leaves inside the funnel, you can actually see a lot of air bubbles which are oxygen being produced. Just at a surface observation, the two experiments placed under the growth lamp have a fair amount of oxygen being produced by the amount of bubbles that you see inside the funnel. As you look closely inside the test tube, you might also see some bubbles being produced or collected from the stem. The experiment placed outside in the sunlight had the most observable change. There were a lot of bubbles inside the funnel and you could still see bubbles being produced inside the test tube. This apparatus also showed the greatest change in volume in terms of oxygen produced. The apparatus placed inside darkness had little to no bubbling observed inside the funnel and there was no change in volume inside the measuring cylinder.
Here we take a second look at the beaker place outside inside direct sunlight and we can see that there are still bubbles being produced and in some experiments what you can do is actually count the number of bubbles produced in a minute and that could also be a measure of the rate of photosynthesis. Now we'll take five similar apparatus set up and instead of manipulating the light intensity what we will change is the concentration of sodium bicarbonate added. From the results, you're going to plot two graphs, one comparing how light affects the rate of photosynthesis and the other comparing how concentration affects the rate of photosynthesis.